we're going to be looking at the magnetic force that acts on a charged particle that is moving in a magnetic field. If we consider a particle which has charge Q and it's moving with a velocity V perpendicular to a magnetic field of flux density B, then that particle will experience a magnetic force. And that force will equal BQV. The charged particle will follow a circular path. And that is because if the velocity it, of the particle is always perpendicular to the magnetic field, then from Fleming's left hand rule, the magnetic force that will act on that particle will always be perpendicular to the velocity. And remember, the condition for circular motion is that the resultant force must be always perpendicular to the velocity. So the magnetic force will equal the centripetal force. So we can say that BQV will equal mv squared divided by r, where m is the mass of the charged particle and r is the radius of the circular path. So here we have a positively charged particle that is moving to the right and so is moving perpendicular to the magnetic flux density which is directed into the plane of the screen. In which direction will the charged particle move? Well we'll need to apply Fleming's left hand rule and so we'll take, our, take the second finger of our left hand and that is the direction of conventional current or the direction in which a positive charge is moving. So in this case, then, as a positive charge is moving to the right, we'd point our second finger to the right. Our first finger of our left hand is the direction of the magnetic flux density. And so our first finger will be pointing into the plane of the screen. And so then you'll see that your thumb is pointing upwards, so the magnetic force on the charged particle is upwards. So the positive charge will be deflected upwards, but because its velocity is always perpendicular to the magnetic field, the magnetic force will always be perpendicular to the velocity, so the charge will follow a circular path like this. If we apply Fleming's left hand rule to the particle at this point, then our second finger will be pointing upwards. Our first finger will be directed pointing into the plane of the screen. So you'll see your thumb pointing to the left. So the magnetic force is to the left. If we consider this point here, your second finger will be pointing to the left, your first finger will be pointing into the plane of the screen, and so your thumb will be pointing downwards, so the magnetic force is downwards. And if we consider this point here, for Fleming's left hand rule, your second finger will be pointing downwards, your first finger If we apply Fleming's left hand rule for the entire path, of the circle, then we can move our left hand so the second finger is always being directed along the tangent of the circle to represent the velocity vector. And so you'll see your thumb will be always directed towards the center of the circle, so providing the centripetal force. If we now consider an electron, which is moving to the right and when it enters the magnetic field whose flux density is into the plane of the screen, in which direction will it move? There's no magnetic force acting on the electron when it's not in the magnetic field, so it continues to move in a straight line. But when it enters the magnetic field, we can apply Fleming's left hand rule to obtain the direction of the magnetic force. So at this point here, we take the, our first finger of our left hand and point it into the plane of the screen. 
The second finger of our left hand represents the direction in which positive charge will move. As the electron is negatively charged and is moving to the right, the positive charge is moving to the left. And so we'd take our second finger and point it to the left. So you'll see that your thumb is pointing vertically downwards. So the magnetic force is vertically downwards. And as the velocity is always perpendicular to the magnetic flux density, the force will always be perpendicular and towards the centre of the circle. When the electron leaves the magnetic field, there will be no magnetic force acting on it, so it will continue to move in a straight line. To determine the orbital frequency, of the charged particle. We begin with our equation for magnetic force equals the centripetal force. So we have a V common on both sides and so can cancel. So we can say VQ will equal MV divided by R. The average speed of the particle moving in the circle will equal 2 pi R divided by the time period. And as 1 over the period equals frequency, we can say then the average speed is equal to 2 pi rf. If we substitute this equation for v into this equation, we get this. We can see that r is common on the top and the bottom, so it cancels. And if we rearrange to make f the subject, then f will equal bq divided by 2 pi m. So the orbital frequency is independent of the radius of the circle the charged particle is moving in, but it does depend on the magnetic flux density and the charge of the particle and its mass. We now consider a charged particle that was initially accelerated using a uniform electric field. So the particle has gained kinetic energy, which is equal to the charge of the particle times by the potential difference it moved through. That charged particle then enters a uniform field of flux density B and so follows a circular path. So the magnetic force that acts on the charged particle equals it the centripetal force. We're now going to take both these equations and rearrange them to make B the subject. So for the first equation, B will equal the square root of 2QV divided by M. This equation, one of the V's cancels, and so we're left with V equals VQR divided by M. We can equate these two equations. I'm going to remove the square root from this side of the equation, so that means squaring the other side of the equation. Because this will be B squared, Q squared, R squared divided by M squared, you'll have a Q divided by M on both sides, and so cancel. And then if we rearrange to leave with the remaining Q divided by M, that will equal the 2V divided by the B squared divided by the R squared. So what this equation is showing you that if we want to determine the charge per unit mass of a particle, then we need to know three things, and that is the potential difference that particle was initially accelerated through. We need to also know the magnetic flux density the particle went through in order to follow a circular path, and then the radius of that circular path. 